Okay, now we're going to look at the Dye Hybrid Cross Worksheet. We looked a little bit at Dye Hybrid Crosses when we were talking about them in Daily Genetics. Remember, Dye Hybrid is crossing two specific traits. We were looking at one trait with our little four box squared. Um, here's the example. In our example, we have a homozygous dominant cross with a homozygous recessive parent. So the homozygous dominant, all it's got is big T's and big G's. So this big T with that big G or that big G. And this T with this big G and this big G. That would be our possible gametes. And same thing with the little ones. This would be our possible gametes here. And then we end up with 100% dihybrid. 100% that have big T, little T, big T, little T, big G, little G. That would be 100% phenotypically 100% tall green. And genotypically, 100% big T, little T, big G, big G. Genotypically, they would all be tall and green. So 16 tall and greens, no tall whites, no short greens or short whites. Number one, says in a summer squash, the white fruit, big W is dominant over yellow fruit, little w. The dish-shaped fruit, big D is dominant over the sphere-shaped fruit, which is little d. So if a squash plant is true breeding for white, true breeding is the same thing as saying purebred or homozygous. So if it's true breeding, it's going to be the same letter. So true breeding for white, disc shaped. Okay. So white would be the recessive. So it's going to be little w, little w, and disc shaped is. It's showing the two recessive traits, so it's going to be homozygous recessive. Little w, little w, little d, little d. So again, this is a lot like the example. So I'm going to fill them all in. We end up with the big w's, big d's for all our gametes across the top, and little w, little d's for our gametes all down the side. And they would fill in this way, big w, little w, big d, little d. And it would end up being 100%, that is because all of our gametes are alike. So it'll be 100% big W, little w, big D, little d, and also be 100% white disc shaped. Number two says, in mice, the ability to run normally is a dominant trait. Mice of this trait are called running mice. The recessive trait causes mice to run in circles only. Mice of this trait are called waltzing mice, a little r. Um, Hair color is also inherited in mice. Black hair is dominant over braille. So for each of the following problems, we're going to determine the parent genotype and determine the possible gametes. We're crossing a heterozygous running with heterozygous black. So heterozygous running is big R, little R. Heterozygous black is big B, little B. With the homozygous running black, so it's big R, big R, big B, big B. So for our heterozygous parent, this big R could go with the big B and give us this. Or the big R could go with the little B and give us this. Our little R could go with the big B and give us this one. And our little R could go with our little B to give us this gamete. So there's four distinctly different gametes possible in that heterozygous. Okay. Big R go with that big B, big R with that big B. This big R with this big B, or this big R with this big B, would give us all big R, big Bs in these gametes. And when we fill that in, we get big R, big R, big B, big B, big R, big R, big B, little B, big R, little R, big B, little B, and so on. Down here, our last one, we would get a big R, little R, and a big B, little B. And you'll notice that when there's homozygous over here, or when all the gametes match up over here, then we end up this whole column being the same. So these are all big R, big R, big B, little, big B, big B, down this column. Okay. All these are the same, so these are going to be the same. Big R, big R, big B, little B, all the way down that column. Big R, little R, big B, little B, big R, little R. Big B, little B, big R, little R, and big R, little R, 
Baby, okay, so those are all the same. This one's going to get all these big R's and these big B's to go with this little R and little B. So they're all going to be big R, little R, big B, little B down this side. So our genotypic ratio would be genotypic ratio is going to be four. Big R, big R, big B, big B's. Oops. Big R, big R, big B, big B's. Two, four. Big R, big R, big B, little B's. To four. Big R, little R, big B, big B's. And two, four. Big R, little R, big B, little B. Then our phenotypic, that physical appearance, our phenotypic ratio. So anything that has a big letter is going to have that dominant trait. So, all of these have big B, have a big R and a big B. All these have at least one big R and one big B. All these have at least one big R and one big B. And all these have at least one big R and one big B. So it would be 16 running black. Uh, to zero zero running around right. zero running around zero. So there should be a zero there. It's a hundred percent or sixteen out of sixteen running black. They all show that dominant trait. Number four, we're crossing a homozygous running, homozygous black, with a heterozygous running brown. So homozygous running is going to be big R, big R. And homozygous black is going to be big B, big B. And we're crossing that one with one that is heterozygous running. Heterozygous means different, so it's big R, little r. And brown is that recessive trait, so it would be little b, little b. Okay. These will all be big R's to be B's. We talk about the gametes. These, this big R can go with this little B, this big R can go with this little B, or this little R can go with this little B, and this little R can go with this little B. This is what our gametes will look like. And then we'll just fill in our boxes. Big R, big R, big B, little B. Okay, and that's what it'll look like filled in. And we'll look at our genotypic ratios, our different genotypes. So we have big R's, big R, big B, little B. And all those, that would be 8 of our 16. So we're going to have 8 big R, big R, big B, little B's. 2, okay, now these are all the same. These are the same. And these are the same. These are all the same here. So then we have 8 big R, little R, big B, little B. So then our phenotypic ratio
anybody that has a big R is going to be running. And everybody got big R's from up here. Everybody got a big B up here. So everything's got a big R and a big B, so it's going to be 16 running black. And we can go ahead and put, go ahead and put two, zero, running brown to zero, waltz in black to zero, waltz in brown. So we can put all those zeros in there. But we'll stop right there for time's sake. I'm going to do this number one with you, and now we'll let you finish it on your own. So it says, set up a Punnett square using the following information. The dominant allele for tall plants is big D. The excessive allele for dwarf plants is little d. Dominant allele for purple flowers is big W. And recessive and white is little w. We're going to cross a homozygous dominant parent, big D, big D. B W B W with little d little d little w little w. Well, the, those gametes are going to be easy because we've got all capitals here. That big d can go with that big w. That big d can go with that big w. That big d with that one and that one. So the, all the gametes for that parent are going to be big d big w because that's all they've got to give. Then our recessive one's going to be little d's and little w's because that's all it has to give. Little d little w. That's what these gametes look like, and then they're all going to get a big D, little D, and a big W, little W. And I will leave you to finish filling that one in and answer those questions. The next one. So now here, number two, it's asking about the probabilities using that Punnett square that we just did in number one. What's the probability of producing tall plants with purple flowers? Okay. Possible, possible genotypes. We'll fill that in after you get your letters up there. Probability, remember, we could also do the shortcut. So remember, we could set those up as two monohybrids, one looking at the height and the other one looking at the colors. You can set it up that way, and then you're just going to multiply those. But this is not so difficult because they all have a, a big D and a big W. They're all going to be showing those dominant traits. and Tall and purple were dominant. So what's the probability of a tall purple plant? Probability is 16 out of 16. Or a 100% chance that you would have a tall purple flower. And the genotypes are all going to be heterozygous for both traits. Because you're only getting big D's from this parent and big W's from this parent, and little D's and little W's from the other parent. So 100% big D, little D, big W, little W. What's the probability of producing dwarf plants with white flowers? That would be a 0% chance because those are not the dominant traits. Not going to happen this go round. Probability of tall plants with white flowers. Well, tall would be the dominant, but white is not a dominant. They're all going to show the dominant trait, so that, again, is going to be a 0%. Probability of producing dwarf plants with purple flowers. Again, 0%, because they're all going to show dominant trait, because they're all going to be heterozygous. And when you're heterozygous, that dominant trait shows up due to the law of dominance. And all the possible genotypes, all the genotypes, they all got a big D from one parent, because that's all that parent had to give. They all got a, oops, they all got a little D from the other parent, because that's all it had to get. They all got a big W from one parent, because that's all that parent had to give. And little W's from the other parents that are all going to be. Heterozygous for both traits. Now the rest of this is next problem is just like this one, so give it a try.